With the December SAT results about to be released, we're going to break down exactly how you can navigate your College Board reports to find as much helpful information as possible to let you know what you did well on on the test and where you need to focus heading into March. One of my students was nice enough to give me her login info, so we're going to walk back through all of these different score sections to help you understand as much detail as possible. Now, this is from the October test, so there'll be a few different things that we'll see on the December one because the December test was on a question answer service like the October one was, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Now, to start with, you'll see your score overview page. This is pretty straightforward. This is simply going to give you your total score, how you did in terms of your percentiles, and break down your reading and writing score out of 800 points and your math score out of 800 points. But this doesn't give us a lot of actionable info for how you really did across the test. So the next thing we want to jump on into is the score details section. Now, we'll get to all these confusing subscores, which are going to give us the most important and specific information a little bit later, but we're going to start with just the basic test scores here. Now, this is where you're actually going to be able to figure out how you did on the reading section versus the writing and language section. Don't worry about this math score out of 40 because from the previous page, we already know exactly how you did on the math part of the test. But if you want to figure out your reading score and your writing and language score, you're simply going to take this value and you're going to multiply it by 10. So this student got a 320 on the reading section out of 400 and a 340 out of 400 on the writing and language section. So this gives us a little bit more info for how you're doing on that reading and writing language half of the test, whether one of these sections is way better than the other. But let's talk about these cross test scores. Now, these are absolutely useless for giving you any actionable info for helping you improve. So don't worry about these, but we'll get to the sub scores. Now, in this description below, I'm gonna break down exactly what types of questions are made up of these different subscores, but some of these subscores lump a ton of different topics together, which makes it a little bit difficult for us to pull out very specific information. So for example, heart of algebra has to do with linear equations, interpreting linear equations, basic algebra, systems of equations, inequalities, geometry. So this score alone makes it a little bit difficult for you to pull out really specific information. So at the end of the video, we'll talk about how you can use an official test to learn a lot more about where you need to focus if this SAT was really just the first one you were taking. But pretty simply, command of evidence here is going to have to do with all those evidence-based questions about which lines best support an answer. Some examples you'll see like this and this, including those paired evidence questions, as well as some writing and language questions that have to do with using evidence to support context as you're going through. Words in context is pretty straightforward. This is basically how you did on the vocab component across the reading section and the writing and language section. So all of those questions like is used in line blank, this word most nearly means, as well as your more direct vocab type questions in the writing and language section. If you scored low here, you may need to spend some time studying vocab or at least finding an approach to make those word and context questions significantly easier for you. Now, the biggest one that we can really pull a lot of information out of is the standard English conventions. These are your grammar rules. So if your score is low here, this gives you the most direct actionable advice out of your subscores to let you know where you should be focusing on. This means you need to learn your sentence structure rules, your comma rules, your colons, dashes, parentheses, apostrophes, subject verb agreement, pronouns, misplaced modifiers, parallel comparisons, parallel structure, a lot of specific stuff. But this is going to be the easiest place if your score was low that you really can start to dig away and make some pretty big improvements. And if you want to learn quite a few of those basic rules for free, you can check out my free trial below. Now, expressions of ideas is going to have to do a little bit more so with context overall in the writing and language section. But this lumps together quite a few different question types. So once again, it's a little bit more difficult for us to find really actionable advice here. And then same thing with your problem solving and data analysis and your passport to advanced math. These lump together a lot of topics, so it's hard to find really specific information there. There's even some math topics that are tested on the SAT, which do not appear in any of these categories. So it makes it a little hard for you to learn exactly what you should focus on. But we're going to go over to the test questions here. Now, the test questions, since this is from the October test, this test, along with the March test, the May test, and the April school day test, are tests which are fully released. 
So for these tests, you can purchase what is called a question answer service, where you would be able to click on the question and you also will see the correct answer versus your answer. For the December test, you will not get that. But the student answer service is simply gonna tell you the question number, the difficulty and the subscore. So this can give you a little bit of information if you wanna pay the money to get your details back, but this is typically something for my own students that I don't advise them that they need to purchase because it's really hard for us to learn the very specific information about what happened on test day based on those. But especially on your writing and language and your math sections, this can give you a little bit of information about the difficulty of the question you missed to let you know whether your mistakes were more likely silly mistakes or whether your mistakes we're more likely places where you just hit a wall in terms of content and you need to focus on those medium to higher level difficulty concepts. Now, your skills insights are really absolutely useless. This is just the SAT trying to give you this big fancy report about what the scores indicates, but this doesn't help you in terms of improving. So although this gives us a little bit of information with the types of questions we're dealing with, as well as the difficulty, and it can let you see if you omitted any questions as you're going through the test questions, which simply means you either did not properly bubble it in or you didn't get to the question. So that can also let you know, maybe if for some strange reason, which has really rarely happened with my students, you start to see that there are a ton of omitted questions, it might be worth asking the SAT to rescore your test because it's possible that the Scantron machine wasn't properly reading your test. If your score is really, really far off, from where you expected it would be. But otherwise, really the best thing that you can do if you got a score that you weren't happy with, especially if you just went in and took the test blind, is to go and take an official SAT and then really dig into the specific types of questions that you missed. And so the test that I would recommend that you kind of do is you could go ahead and take this practice test seven, and I'm gonna give you guys all free access to explanations for the questions as well as use a diagnostic sheet here, which I'm gonna link below, which is gonna let you actually dig into the specific types of questions that you missed to let you start to put together a better study plan for where you should be focusing. And next week, I'm gonna drop a video covering how you should approach the, how you should approach and prepare for an SAT with about three months heading into that next March SAT. So I hope this video helped you out. Please like and subscribe. If you guys have any further questions about gaining insights from this test or about how you should be focusing and preparing if the SAT didn't go as well as you want, drop them in the comments below and then look out for that video I'll be posting next week.